how does how does revelation when you read through that help you understand the times that we're in because as far as i understand and correct me if i'm wrong book of revelation is broken up into three parts it's the things that were that things that happened the things that are and then the things that will come to pass right so future and then as i understand it we're in the last of the last days so we're in the the things that still are as were recorded by what was it john if i'm not mistaken um so knowing having a good interpretation or i should say the right interpretation of revelation to truly understand the times we are in today in 2024 being the last of the last days if you come to that conclusion and to know that okay there's going to be these 10 kingdoms that rise you know this one kills three and it's like you know you got these fourth you know, horse, we've got all these different things that are occurring. So we know that none of those have occurred just yet. We're still living in a time of a fracturing of multiple ideologies, multiple powers that have yet to uh, unify. So we haven't seen that uni unification yet. And then the, 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 the kings, the 10 kings that will rise out of that particular situation. And then you'll have the one, the 11th that comes in and starts doing all these things. So before I, I go crazy there, but how does knowing that book help you know that when God is telling you to do something that is an adverse negative re reaction or negative effect to your successful business today, or God's successful business, I should say that you're stewarding over, how do, how do you draw that distinction to know that, okay, logically this doesn't make sense. We ran the numbers, I ran it with my brother, and if we make this move and go to these people over here, we're going to lose money. How do you draw that distinction to know that you're not just, you know, you had too many, you know, cups of wine last night or, you know, <laughs> uh, influenced by the wrong dude. This is truly coming from God. It, do, you, yeah. do you lean on the word to validate what just came into your mind or is it more of a you react and you just you, you move forward with it? Help, help me understand that part because there are some times in my life where that was the decision I had to do to almost target a certain group of people that would not make me money to avoid these higher tier clients. And I chose to stay with these clients. My income went down, but I got even closer with God in there. And now I'm starting to see income go up, right? And it's like this, this, this flowing. And I think that's credited to me simply trying to do things my own way. And when I steer off for three months and then I get a conviction and I start coming back. So I think it's just... There, there's things to that, but if you want to speak to that a little bit. Yeah. So there's three, I think there's three, if not four, uh, times throughout the gospels where people ask Jesus, why are you here? Right? Like they ask him, what's your purpose? Why are you here? Mm -hmm. And Jesus answers almost every single time. He goes, I have come to do the will of the one who sent me. Right? So for me, when I think about like the book of revelations and just the day to day, what does that look like? Lean on the Lord to simply live in a way where I just simply do what God asked me to do every single day. I, I am here to do the one of the will who sent me. Right? So I, I know that if we're talking day to day stuff, like I know on an on any given day, Jesus multiple times had to go into a quiet place to spend time with the father. Right. So if Jesus did that, I should probably do. That. So that's that's a, a, a tactic that I've picked up and a habit that I picked up that I would encourage everybody to do. Multi, I mean, just a couple times a day, even once a day, just spend five minutes and go in a bathroom or go in some quiet. But you can just do it in your office and just spend time with God. And it doesn't have to be scripture. It could just be asking God, hey, God, what do you want me to know and what do you want me to do? So in this five minutes that I, I spend with you, what do you want me to know? What are lies I'm believing about myself that just aren't true? What are the truths that you do have for me? What do you and what do you want me to know? I just want to spend time with you. I want to hear you, right? Because I think a lot of times people interpret spending time with God reading the Bible. And when you read the Bible, it's very much of a one-sided conversation, right? Uh, yeah. So for me, because because when you read the Bible, it's what you interpret the words to be. So for me, I do my best. Like, God, you know my heart. You know where I'm at. Allow me to listen to your voice and hear your voice during this time. Like, I, I want to spend time with you to figure out where I need to go, what my guidance and direction needs to be. And because I, you know, I like I love the Bible. I read scripture every day. My wife and I read scripture every night. And I read scripture, you know, when I, I actually listen to scripture when I when I work out, when I'm in the car. 
right? So, and it, like it says, like meditated on it day and night, right? Yeah. So I, I love scripture, but I think a lot of Christians, uh, they stop at the Bible. The purpose of the Bible is to point towards the works of Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit. Like imagine staying at a Ritz Carlton and, you know, like if, if you go to like really, really nice hotels, right? Like if you go to like a suite, they have, they have like kind of like the shoe room, like the lobby, and then you have your suite. Right. And I, I think a lot of Christians spend so much time in the lobby and in the shoe room that they forget, hey, hey, like there's this whole suite for you. There's this whole yeah. executive suite at the Ritz Carlton that's for you. And you're missing out because you're just spending time in the shoe room. Right. And mm -hmm. so when I see a lot of Christians, they just all they do is just read their Bible and they never hear the Holy Spirit. They never hear the things that God wants them to do on a day to day basis. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like you're missing out. Right. Like you're you're the one missing out. Like God will do what he wants to do regardless of whether or not we say yes, right? What, regardless, regardless of whether or not we obey, God's will will be done. Sometimes we're, we as human beings, we're so narcissistic that we think just because we didn't obey God's word that it's just not going to happen. And that's not true. <laughs> uh, God, is, God will do things, whatever he wants, whenever he wants, regardless of whether or not you're in your room reading your Bible or you're smoking crack, Right. Like he will do what his will be done, regardless of what you decide to do. Mm -hmm. But the joy for us is that we get to participate him in that, right? Like my yeah. favorite line on evangelism, like my favorite tactic on evangelism isn't to go door knocking. That's the worst form of evangelism. You actually turn more people off to Jesus than you do for Jesus. My mm -hmm. favorite thing for evangelism, my favorite tactic for evangelism is to simply ask God, God, you love this person like way more. So I'll give you an example. So I, I have a, um, a, a, a person on my leadership team who has worked with me for six years, six years, right? And he's a pretty high ranking executive in one of my company. And so for six years, I asked God, God, you love this person way more than I could possibly imagine. You are recklessly pursuing this person. What are you doing in that person's life? And is there anything I could do to help you? And what can I do to join you in that, in loving this person? Yeah. Right. And for six years, God was like, don't bring me up. Don't talk about it. Just love this person, care for this person, promote wow. peace, love for this person, love this person. That's it. Love this person, love this person. Don't mention anything about scripture. Don't mention whatever you could talk about it, but only if you like only if you bring it up and he happens to be in the room, but you are not. And then finally, about a month ago, I, I was working out and and I was like, God, is there anything you want me to know? Is there anything you want me to do? He goes, yes. Uh, go over the book of Luke with this person, with this high ranking executive, because this person was interested in learning more about leadership. Right. And so the spirit was like, hey, you know, the greatest leader, tell him the greatest leader that I know I believe ever walked the earth was Jesus. Let's read this book called the book of Luke together to figure out what type of leader Jesus was. Oh. Right. So the spirit convicts me. He's like, okay, I want you to call this person, say exactly what I just told you to say and go over the book of Luke with this individual's two chapters every single week in your one on one conversation. So we've been going over the book of Luke every week. Right. For the last like four or five weeks now. Right? And my thing is, OK, God, like we're going to I'm being obedient. It's it's a matter of your spirit transforming this person. It has nothing to do with what I say or nothing that I could sell. It's your transformative works. People draw closer to you. It's nothing. I don't bring people to Jesus. Jesus does that. Right. So uh, it's really neat because after six years, it's like, wow, like, OK, like, God, what do you want to do with this person? How can how can I be obedient? Right. So if you want to evangelize people. Uh, if you want to bring people to the Lord, I guess, which doesn't exist, Jesus brings people to Jesus. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to be evangelistic, then think about the two or three or four people that you want to, I guess, evangelize and ask God, God, you love this person way more. I can imagine what are you doing in this person's life and how can I join you in that? That's awesome. Do that. And I, I, I'll tell you, I guarantee it. He'll ask you to do things that are really uncomfortable. <laughs> Definitely. Not only in our own business, in our own lives. But again, it's like, what is, could that be a financial freedom strategy? How do we love according to how he loved us first? Right? Like, what if we, what if there was a way to measure that? 
you know, me putting on my, my logical brain because that's the way God wired me to so just kind of look at the numbers and just look at the facts of things. And then like the emotion comes with it and I get driven by it.